Hi, today I'm building the world's worst keyboard. There is a 10 key keyboard layout that I found called Astenoip. It seems like a good concept. You have 10 fingers, therefore a keyboard should have 10 keys. That tracks. This keyboard design makes extensive use of cording, so you press one key and you get access to a group of different keys. Basically like shift to get a capital letter, except it's for all of the letters. I decided I wanted to try it. And to try it, I decided I had to build it. For the controllers, you know I'm gonna run Cam K on this bad boy. So I got two RP2040 zeros from Waveshare. They also have built-in RGB. For the key switches, I decided since there are only 10 and you have to cram all of the noise into just a few switches, Cherry MX Blues. I designed a split case for the ultimate ergonomics. The case can hold an OLED screen on either half. It also has spots for that sweet, sweet tenting. Again, the ergonomics. With all my parts picked out, the case designed, it's time to put this thing together. <laughs> First off, I'm gonna put in some heat set inserts for that tenting. Next, add some switches. Install the screens. Skip the soldering because it's boring. Add some keycaps. Time to do a typing test. Okay, so let's talk first about what works about this keyboard. I do think the concept of using cording for all of the letters is smart and there's something there. But I'm not sure that this implementation is what the designers were after. Um, now that I've talked about what works, let's talk about what doesn't work. So I can't seem to figure out how the original design is supposed to have an enter key or a control key. I also, I think this is probably a failing on my part, but every time you press a key, you have to wait like half a second before you can press a different key. So if you're not pressing one of the letters that's on the first layer, it takes a long time. Because of the delay in key presses, typing is kind of unpredictable. A design issue, the screws don't fully fit in their recessed holes on the bottom. The whole thing kind of rocks. I didn't figure out how to add numbers. The screens are the wrong resolution. There is a mistake on one of the OLED screens, but I can't remember where it is, so I can't fix it. It has RGB, but you can't see it. The blue switches. Okay, let's talk about the smart parts of the design that I did. I added these two OLED screens because I figured it would be hard to memorize a new layout for a shit post. So the screens will show you what key is what. And then when you press one of the keys, the screen changes with the new keys. This means that I didn't have to memorize the layout to type on this damn thing for four minutes. Okay, question and answer time. 
Should you build this? Absolutely not. Zero out of 10. Do not build this physical keyboard. This is designed to be on a touch interface. Do not make this a real thing. I have cursed the world enough. Actually, I'm pretty sure this keyboard is illegal in four states. I hate that it looks kind of cool though. Thank you for watching this video about a terrible, terrible mistake that I made and carried through on and built and then used and then edited into a video and you watched it and now you're here and there's no way I'm getting the time I put back into this or you're getting the time you spent watching this video back. In. So uh, I'm sorry about that, but really no one could have seen this coming. It was inevitable and every single decision you've ever made and I've ever made has led us to this point.